Hi everyone, I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining us. Tom Hanks plays Mr. Rogers in the highly anticipated new movie, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. The Academy Award-winning actor says he initially turned down the part, but director Marielle Heller changed his mind. CBS This Morning co-host Gail King sat down with Hanks for an extended discussion about the movie. But it's you I like. You Every part are very valuable human being. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter who you are. That's what I think Fred was able to make people feel. That he, not necessarily better, not necessarily stronger, but Fred made people feel worthwhile. For over three decades, it's a beautiful day in the Fred Rogers was America's favorite neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? And now Tom Hanks is stepping into the shoes Hello, neighbor. of the beloved children's television host in a new film inspired by the man who touched the hearts of millions. I didn't know what to expect, Tom, when I walked in the theater. I knew it wasn't a biopic, but I think most people walking in will think that it's a biopic. Oh, like Fred Rogers from Cradle the Grave? Yes. And then a young it, man was born yes, and he had a dream. Yes. And then people say, well, okay, Fred Rogers, played by Tom Hanks, of course it is. But I think people should understand this is truly, truly acting. He had been this iconographic Johnny Carson did goofs on Fred Rogers. Yeah. Eddie Murphy did goofs on Fred Rogers. His cadence and the sound of him became this kind of like signature of cluelessness or he he, he was that. a commodity in, in this in this way. And as soon as as soon as you become that commodity that is known for this very specific sound and look, the sweaters and the blue sneakers and whatnot. Well, then it's like, how do you act as a can of Coca-Cola or a Frigidaire refrigerator? It just is a thing. And Fred, Fred was so specific about what he did on camera. He's stringing together words and with a rhythm and a, in order to examine a theme very specifically. And that's what Fred did on every one of these programs. And because he spoke slowly and thoughtfully, became this kind of like signature of fame is a four letter word like tape or zoom. Did you know much about him? We would have been nine, ten. Yeah, I didn't pay any attention. It was this odd show that looked very cheesy. The puppets, their mouths didn't move and it was so obvious that he was doing all the different kinds of voices. And so I remember seeing it, uh, you know, when you're 13, 14 years old and I was already saying, come on, cut, move to something else, make it a little snappier. Like, it's not for nine year olds. Yeah. It's for an impressionable mind that does not know how the world works at all. I'm proud of you. And I've certainly learned a lot by knowing you. Every person I talked to who said, oh, when you spoke to Fred, you felt, you felt like you were the only person in the world that mattered to him. That's a gift, Tom. It's a gift, but it's also a practice. We are trying to give the world positive ways of dealing with their feelings. Hanks brought Mr. Rogers to life with a little help from the woman who knew him best, Joanne Rogers, his wife of 50 years. We're told Joanne Rogers lent you some of his ties. All of his ties. I don't know if that gives you an extra special feeling or if it meant something to you. Anytime you yes. can have some sort of like, kind of like little talisman like that in there, it ends up being special. That's a big deal. But I read that you turned it down three times this part. Oh, I wouldn't say three times. The, Five times. Well, the way it works is well, like... Well, you've turned it down before. In the business of show, Gail, and yes. I'm so glad you asked me this question. Yeah. The business of show, there are these things that come out and say, hey, here is a hot property. Here is a screenplay that these guys have written off, and it's going to become something. And I read it when there was nobody attached. It was just a, it was essentially 120 pages of, of a screenplay. And there was no filmmaker attached. There was nothing. It's like, you can control this if you want to. And I, when I read it, I said, okay, I get the Mr. Rogers thing. I guess that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, this is about a guy going through, you know, a, a crisis that is, can be very common amongst men. Mm -hmm. Father issues, mm -hmm. wife issues, baby mm -hmm. issues. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't, I didn't turn down something that was already the specific thing. I turned down this kind of quasi-blank canvas. And it existed like that for a real long time. But a chance meeting brought Hanks back to the story of Mr. Rogers. Here we are. This is our first day on our neighborhood set. 
That's Tom Hanks right over there. I love how you and the director meet and how this how this collaboration came about. I met Mari at a, at uh, the week that an article in the New York Times came out about women filmmakers, and I had read it and literally 24 hours before I went to this birthday party for my grandkids. And uh, I said, now, what are you, she says, I'm, I'm a director. I said, oh, I just read this interesting article in the New York Times about female directors. Have you seen it? And she <laughs> looked at me and she said, I'm in it. I said, let me, please, let me remove my shoe from my mouth. So I uh, chatted with her there, and uh, I had heard about her film, Diary of a Teenage Girl, and I so immediately took a look at it and said, uh, this lady's going places. You said, I want to work with her. When she attached herself to uh, this, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, and after a, a one read and, and, a, and a quick phone call with her, I said, this is only just a matter of when we can do it. She said she did not want you to be an imitation of Fred Rogers. Well, the conversation, okay, so let's start with the most obvious aspect, the look. Um, are we going to do teeth? I don't have the same nose. Well, what are we going to, she said, you'll have a wig and we'll do something with your eyebrows. So the rest is about you embodying the pulse, the heartbeat, the sensibility, uh, the motivations of why Fred Rogers uh, commanded a room in the way that the way that he did, and I don't say you could probably say you could command the room, but it's funny at, at WQED, mm -hmm. the, studio. Which, the studio in Pittsburgh, where we recreated the set, and everybody just coming by and said, "Oh, well, I haven't seen this since yeah. you know 1992 I hear it or whatever." It was done to a T. It didn't? was yeah. right down to the door knocker. Yeah. Um, uh, the people at, at QED who had known Fred, who had worked with Fred, we we actually had his lighting uh, director was the guy sitting right there. So he did the TV series and he also did the movie. They all said that Fred, there was no question about when Fred was in the building, <clears throat> meaning that he was the boss. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, he's kind of like Elvis walking in, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but F Fred being in the building meant that there was going to be an attention paid to the process of making this very, very specific children's TV show. Mm -hmm. It was extremely thought out. There were there were times when Fred had I saw the scripts, you know, I saw mm -hmm. had written in his own hand, you know, on on legal tablets mm -hmm. in in the uh, in the archives. There would be moments where he would come across and wonder if he was doing it right, if he was actually addressing the theme of that particular show in which he would stop production and go off and talk to his advisors, his children's psychologists, his seminarians in order to make sure that he was putting out something that was what he was purporting to put out. There's so many things people can do in this world. Many wonderful things that help people and not hurt people. He was an ordained minister who never once mentioned God mm -hmm. in any of his, he ne ne never said anything, remember God loves you, or he never said anything like that. And his quote that he loved was, was from the uh, St. Exupery's The Little Prince was, that which is most essential is invisible to the eye. And that means that there is a force that a human being can use on another human being that is meant to make that person feel safe. What was the hardest thing for you, Tom, about this part? Because I am fascinated. Slowing down. Slowing down. <laughs> Not interrupting people in the middle of them asking questions. <laughs> Not jumping to a conclusion that I know exactly what I'm going to say while you're still trying to formulate a question. That but it's more than just slowing down. There's your inflection. It's your expression. You, it's more than that. It's more than slowing down. You have to start at a place where uh, the first challenge that you, you have to lay down for yourself as an actor is, what's the big beat here that is they're going to be demanded of me? And number one, it was that cadence. Can you give us an example, Tom, of how you practiced to get it right? Because you really did nail it. Well, and it had to take practice to do that. Well, <laughs> and acting. An I awful lot it. of it is. If if I was to take you to the movie and and I would I would I would say I am now going to tell you what was my first day of shooting on this film, you'd say, Oh yeah, yeah, because you kind of talk a little faster there. Mm -hmm. It's a just, it's just a little different because a lot of ways I don't think you're really in tune with 
the DNA of a movie until you're shooting on the third day. I think it takes about three days in order to. Was it hard for you to do? It was. It was terrifying. Oh. It was. It was terrifying. terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to hear that it's terrifying because people think that of all the roles that you've done, this would be a lock for you to do, <laughs> and certainly the easiest for you to do. There's no such thing as an easy yeah. role to do, because yeah. uh, the moment the moment I said yes, I, I began to have the night sweats that go Did along you? with trying to play. Look, I have played a lot of real people. Fred was a very, very public persona. And everybody has an idea of what Fred is, what Fred was like, the mysteries behind Fred. We even get to address it in the movie. Somebody says, do you have a lot of tattoos, you know, under because there was that folklore that, that he was a Navy SEAL and, and his body was covered with tattoos. But the, the, the terror that goes along with it is that you want to land in a place that people recognize as his true human behavior, whether you're playing somebody who's real or somebody who's not. And if it's not authentic, you're actively lying in, a, in an art form that is supposed to be holding the mirror up to nature. That attention to authenticity is at the core of every Tom Hanks role. It must be hard being a king. The Academy Award winner has played a range of characters with his everyman charm, but there are some roles he says he just won't do. You don't seem to gravitate toward bad guy roles. Is that deliberate on your part? Uh, I don't. I have you played, played them. I, I know. played guys that did bad things, yeah. but it's the it's the motivationalist bad guy role that I don't I don't buy. Even as a, when I was young, I did not like movies that were just the standard antagonist protagonist bent. James Bond movies are really cool, and I absolutely love them. But how often I don't understand a guy who just says, "Before I kill you, Mr. Bond, perhaps you'd like a tour of our installation." I don't get it. I, 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 the, the Shakespeare has great. I would love to play Iago. I would love to play mm. Richard III. There's all sorts of really bad people out there, but I understand what their motivations are. Mm -hmm. The person who is just bad, be it Skeletor or mm -hmm. uh, Darth Vader or something mm -hmm. like that, at the end of the day, I said, but why? <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what turned there? Do you consider yourself a hero? I don't think of myself as a hero. No, not Did playing this role change you? They all do, one way or another. Fred Rogers, uh, <laughs> we, every day on the call sheet, there was an attached quote of Fred's. And sometimes they were long, and oh. sometimes they were very, very simple. Wow. One was, there are three, <clears throat> the three secrets of happiness are, be kind, be kind, and be kind. And you think, well, that's namby-pamby. That's goody two-shoes. No matter what your bent is, being kind means you give everybody a fair shake. Mm -hmm. Being kind is, is just being open to a possibility of making a simple choice that makes a day a little bit better. We'll just take a minute and think about all the people who loved us into being. It's very riveting where he says, think about the people that loved you into being. Oh yeah, yeah. Tom, I sat there and you could have heard a pin drop in the theater. Because I think we're all asking ourselves that question. And the answer is sometimes very sad, but it's also very exciting. I mean, it chokes me up to thinking about th that moment. When we were doing it, I, I asked Mari, I said, are we really gonna do this? Because silence makes people uncomfortable. Uh, and that silence in a movie is deadly. <laughs> I think one of the reasons why that is so uncomfortable, one, Certainly, because it's yeah. very, very personal, because everybody yeah. goes to a very specific place individually. Yeah. There is no, this is the bad thing that happened to me. This is not, I'm still bitter about this. It's a question about who made you the best version of yourself that you've ever been. And it is that lack of blame. It is that lack of cynicism that I think is almost, it's scary in order to come across, because it's, it's not our default mode. And I think maybe that's why I'm so excited for people to see it because this movie seems to be coming out at a time when we need it most. Am I overthinking it here? Well, I think it might be a, a comment on the yin and yang of where we are right now. I don't want to overuse the word cynicism, but there's, it seems to be the easiest way to make a buck and the easiest way to win an argument is to go right to this place of, you know, the standard yeah. us versus them yes. dilemma. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, in Fred Rogers' neighborhood, there's no them. It's just us. 
you know, and when he says, hey, oh, I got an invitation to go to a, to a concert. Want to come along? Come on, let's go. And you see that little toy city? It's like, let's go see the other people that inhabit our world that actually make our world a better place.